Now this method is a combination of full transportable export import and incremental backups. If your source database is running 11.2.0.3 or newer and the target is 12.1.0.1 or newer, you can use this combination. If you cannot meet these, these requirements, you can still use transportable table spaces and incremental backups, but you would need to do a lot more legwork and a lot more manual work because you cannot use the Perl scripts. If you, if you choose to endeavor into transportable table spaces as your migration vehicle, there are some things that you should consider. Now you have to create the target database with the same character set and national character set as the source database. I highly recommend that you enable blockchain tracking. Now note this is an enterprise edition feature, but by enabling that, you will make your incremental backups run much, much faster. If you don't enable it, Armand will have to scan the entire source database to identify the blocks that are changed when it does the incremental backup. And in contrast to that, with blockchain tracking, Armand can just look in the change tracking file and I quickly identify those blocks. Another thing you have to be aware of is that TDE, is TDE table space encryption is not uh, supported. If you do a cross NDNS migration and your source database is encrypted with TDE, you have to remove the encryption, do the migration and re-encrypt. If you're using this method, uh, in a migration project where you don't go across NDNS, it's perfectly fine to have a source database that is encrypted with TDE. Another thing to consider is the compatible parameter. In your target database or in your target PDB, the compatible parameter must be the same or higher compared to the source database. And something you also should look into is the database time zone if you compare the source and the target database. If they are not the same and you don't store timestamp information with your timestamps, then you may have an issue. Now I have some recommendations for the data pump part. So this is information you would put into your parameter file. First, you should exclude the sys user. If you are importing into a PDB, you cannot import the sys user anyway because it belongs to the CDB. But if you import into a non-CDB database, I would still recommend that you leave out the sys user because it doesn't really make sense to copy over the password and definition of the sys user from the source to the target database. You could just create the sys user as you want it in advance on your target database. So exclude it, and it will also uh, help to avoid some of the noise that you can have in the data pump block file, uh, like errors from the data pump import. Further, I would recommend that you exclude temporary table spaces from their full transportable export import. It's much easier and much faster to simply create the same temporary table spaces in your target database and just uh, omit them from the full transportable export import. If you don't do that, you might end up with some errors in the data pump block file that you would need to investigate. So in order to keep the noise in the data pump block file a little lower, I would simply uh, create the temporary table spaces myself and then exclude them from the import. And as always, when you use data pump, you should exclude statistics. Now, when you do transportable table spaces, there is a little oddity because the syntax to exclude statistics is a little different with transportable table spaces. You have to exclude table statistics and index statistics. In addition to that, if you import into 19C, there are some spatial users that no longer is, exist. And in order to avoid getting errors about those missing users, you can simply exclude them from the data pump import. Your spatial functionality will still work in 19C. It doesn't affect the functionality, but you can avoid some of the errors in the data pump block file by excluding these spatial users. If you import from a database that is lower than 12.2 into a database that is 12.2 or higher, you will get errors about one package that no longer exists. It's DBMS defers sys. Now this error is totally ignorable. The package has been removed by design in 12.2. So you can simply just ignore this error in your data pump block file. Another thing to consider is that multimedia has been de-supported in 19C but the components are still there in the database, but the functionality is de-supported. So when you import into 19C, you might see errors that are related to the ORDIM component, but those errors can be safely uh, and totally disregarded. In a later version, uh, the multimedia component will be removed from the database. So you can simply ignore the error. 
And then finally, for your reference, I have included some MOST node that is very useful when you do transportable uh, table space migrations.